Hello and welcome. We're at the annual meetings of the IMF in Bali. And I'm with Tim Adams, who's the president of the Institute of International Finance. So, Tim, we've seen a huge amount of volatility in the markets uh, as the conference has been going ahead, and we've seen great stock market falls. I mean, are you concerned about the uh, situation in emerging markets and whether we're facing another emerging markets crisis? The market turmoil certainly dominated the conversation the last couple of days, and everyone is speculating what was... Uh, the trigger for it, what precipitated this market sell-off. There's no real consensus, but it does have a deleterious effect on emerging markets. I think that the emerging market story is really about some idiosyncratic stories, particular countries. It's not about the asset class per se. There's some very strong emerging markets out there. So I think emerging market sell-off is, is sort of oversold and at times the markets will begin to discriminate. So Tim, we've just had this report come out from the G20 looking at improving the governance of the financial system. Uh, do you think that's going to address some of these problems that we've been discussing? In the past, we've had these very orthodox views about running a surplus and you can't run a current account deficit. But in fact, many of these countries need to uh, engage in capital formation. They need to invest in, in human capital, but as well as fiscal capital. They need to invest, they need uh, to also consume. And there are times where you need to import capital when you don't have sufficient savings. So we need to think about each country and its unique set of circumstances. Because we do have an issue, don't we, with uh, the legitimacy of some of the institutions. We're seeing a lot of uh, populism around. I mean, do you think we need to address that? Without question. And we've seen the rise of populism. It's a topic that, you know, uh, permeates every one of these kinds of conversations. It's incumbent on all of us who believe in the multilateral system to ensure that these institutions, whether it's the G20 or the IMF or World Bank, are seen as accountable and legitimate and actually responsive to uh, individuals of all stripes. And, and many times we're seen as elitist and out of touch. We've got to ensure they work for everyone. Well, one of the biggest challenges is obviously going to be uh, Africa and how we take Africa and some of the other emerging markets to that first stage of development. I mean, how are we going to address that? I think we have a system that can take them in, but it's a system that needs to constantly evolve. We need to ask ourselves, how does it work? How can we make it better? And how, just because it functioned well for Europe and the United States and Japan and you know, South Korea in the 40s, 50s, and 60s, how can we make it function for Africa in the 21st century? Potentially 2 billion people, uh, 53 countries. We need, to, we need to make sure that it does work because uh, failing with respect to Africa would be, would be devastating. Tim, it's been 10 years now since the financial crisis. Um, are the banks in a, a more secure and safe situation now as we face volatility again? I think we've done a tremendous amount. Banks globally have raised $4 trillion worth of uh, tier one equity capital, so well capitalized. They have a whole host of other financial instruments that they can use in terms of uh, shock absorbers and if there are a downturn. We have better governance, we have less leverage, more liquidity, better wholesale funding. It's a completely different financial system. That doesn't mean we won't have a crisis in the future, but we have a very different system than we had 10 years ago. Tim, thank you very much for talking to us. Have a great conference. You're very kind. Thank you.